Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Adobe updated Lightroom Classic 2 version 14.2. In today's video, I'm going to show you everything that's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Adobe Lightroom Classic. Like most updates, this update includes bug fixes and support for new lenses. In the description below this video, I'll have a list of all those new lenses. Now, overall, I wouldn't call this update earth shattering, but what they did do is welcome. They have some performance improvements. In the past, it was difficult for me to demonstrate a performance improvement, but I was tipped off ahead of time about what was going to be improved. So last week, with the older version of Lightroom, I made a video, and in that video, I did three different things that caused me problems that get bogged down when I try to do them. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut to that video. You're going to see the problems I had with the older version of Lightroom. And then we're going to return to this, the latest version of Lightroom, and I'm going to do those exact same things, and you could see how much it has improved. So, let's go to that video I did last week. Historically, if you're using Lightroom Classic on an older computer, or if you're editing an image that has already been heavily edited, you'll run into three different performance issues. For example, I have this image, I'm working on an older iMac, and this image is heavily edited. You can see that I did basic adjustments, I edited with the tone curve, color mixer, detail, lens corrections, transform, and I went to the little eraser tool and I erased some things I didn't want in the image, and most notably, I added a lot of masks. One performance issue that you may have encountered if you're using Lightroom Classic on an older computer or if you're editing a heavily edited image, as you add masks, it gets more and more sluggish. For example, this image has 10 masks. If I want to add an 11th, I'll click the little plus sign and go to the brush. So I have this brush tool, and I'll go to the far left, and I'll click with the left mouse button and slide to the right, and you could see that it's taking a long time for that brush stroke to kick in. Again, I'll do it again. I'll go over here to the left. And you can see how the masks are bouncing around. It's like really sluggish. Click with left mouse button, draw to the right, and it takes a long time to kick in. So that is one performance issue that you may have encountered. Again, this will be common if you're working on an older computer or even if you have a brand new computer and you just are editing a heavily edited image such as this with a bunch of masks in it. The second performance issue has to do with white balance. Again, if you have those same situation, a heavily edited image, or you're working on an older computer, what sometimes you'll encounter is if you go to the temp slider and move it, say, to the right, it takes a long time to kick in. See how long that took to kick in? And watch, I'll reset it by double-clicking on the word temp, and it's taking a long time to kick in. So... That is annoying because often you're trying to get a precise uh, white balance adjustment and you're inching the slider along and it takes a long time to kick in. So you really want that adjustment to be instantaneous so you know what you're doing. The third performance problem uh, I've not encountered, but I'm going to show you what it is anyway. If you go to the crop tool and you go to the angle slider, for some users, again, not me, it's delayed. Now I'm going to move it and you're going to see it's instantaneous. But for some people, what they'll find is when they're moving that angle tool, it takes a long time for it to kick in. And it's hard to straighten an image if you're not getting immediate feedback. I'll reset this by clicking reset. And you will see it will take a second or two to reset. So you can see that did take a little bit. So these are three different performance issues that many of us have had to put up with in Lightroom Classic over the years. They've improved this in the latest version of Lightroom. Let me show you. Okay, we're back. You can see I have the same exact image that I used in that video. We're going to go to masking first. I'm going to create a new mask. I'm going to get a brush. And like that previous video, I'm going to start out at the left-hand side up in the sky, and I'm just going to make a brush stroke left to right. And you can see that it's pretty much instantaneous. So that is definitely improved. I'm going to undo it by hitting Command-Z on my Mac. It's Control-Z on a PC, or Z if you prefer. And the other thing I had problems with was 
the temp slider, when I was setting white balance, it was really delayed when I moved it. Now you'll notice it's pretty much instantaneous. So you can see that has improved a lot. I'll reset it by double clicking on the word temp and it's reset. So that has been improved quite a bit. And finally, the crop tool. I really didn't have a problem here, but some people do have a problem when they use this slider and adjust the, uh, you know, the level of their image. And you can see it's still working instantaneously for me. Uh, one thing you might have noticed, though, in that video with the older version of Lightroom, when I clicked reset, it took like a second or two to kick in. Now you'll notice it's pretty much instantaneous. So those are welcome performance improvements uh, in this latest version of Lightroom. They added something new to tethering. In the past, I never really demonstrated tethering, but I'm going to show it to you nonetheless. So I'm going to go up to File, and I'm going to go down to Tethered Capture, Start a New uh, Tethered Capture Session. I'm just going to keep these defaults here and click OK. And it's detecting my camera. It did. I'm going to click on Live so you could see the lens, out the lens of my camera. Now, what is new, unfortunately, uh, let me see if I can move this thing. What is new only applies to Canon, Nikon, and Sony. Unfortunately, if you use a different camera, this won't be new. What you can do is click right on the image and focus. So you can see I focused on my grandson's stuffed animal. I can focus over here if I want. Also, in the lower left-hand corner, there's this drop-down. And here I could choose a different focus mode. So if I want to go to single point AF mode, I could do that and just click on the image where I want to focus. I could auto area is what I was previously in, pinpoint AF. And anything that's available in the camera will pretty much be available here. So you could just focus as you seek that, focus on the background, focus on the stuffed animal. You can see I have IAF on, so I grabbed the eye of the stuffed animal. But that's it. That's what's new in tethering uh, in this version of Lightroom. If I want to take a picture, I could just click right here. So I don't really have to be uh, behind the camera. Uh, I don't think I would ever do that with a model. Um, conversely, uh, if I was photographing, um, you know, something like a product, you know, product photography or something, it's actually easier to set everything up on your tripod and then go to your computer, click where you want to focus, then click here to take the photo. And then once you take the photo, it'll show up in Lightroom right here. And this is the image. So I'm going to close down tethering. So that's what's new in tethering. And again, unfortunately, this is only applicable uh, for Canon, Nikon, and Sony users. Now, the other thing has to do with catalog backups. One real annoying feature uh, of Lightroom was that you would back up your catalog regularly. Some people do it every day. Some people like me do it once a week. Some might do it once a month. But whatever, you're backing up your catalog, and you get these relatively large backup files and they just build up on your computer there was no way to maintain them from within Lightroom you had to go outside of Lightroom and delete them they would take up a lot of disk space well now you could take care of them inside of Lightroom to do that you want to go to catalog settings on a Mac catalog settings is under the Lightroom classic menu on a PC it's under the edit menu so you go to catalog settings and you go to this last tab backups and you can see you could change the frequency of your backup here but right here is new all these are the backups that I have on my computer. You can see I have a lot. And they're large files. They take up a lot of space. And this was always annoying. Periodically, I would have to go through outside of Lightroom and go through these and delete them. Well, now I could do it from within Lightroom. Click on one. You'll see that there's show. So that'll show you where it is on your hard drive. You could delete it. If you click delete, it will delete it from the list and delete it from your hard drive. If you click remove, it will remove it from the list but leave it on your hard drive. So most often for me, I'll click delete and then it's going to, do you really want to delete this? And I'll say, okay. And it deleted it. So I could get rid of these older ones. The older ones are at the bottom. I didn't try, but I think you could select more than one. Yeah. So you could select a bunch of them and delete them. And yeah, so that is a better way to maintain your catalog backups from within Lightroom. Again, it's in catalog settings on the backups tab. And finally, uh, they've added, uh, I did a video on this before because it was in uh, Adobe Camera Raw, and these are adaptive profiles. 
And what happened was uh, Adobe apparently made a mistake and they accidentally had an update in Lightroom that included the adaptive profiles. And somebody did a video on it and I got bombarded with with um, questions about it because people couldn't find it in their Lightroom. What happened was because Adobe accidentally released it, they pulled that update right away. So most people didn't get it. Well, it is now in uh, Lightroom version 14.2. Personally, I'm unsure if I really like them. And to better explain what they are, as far as a profile is concerned, let's go to this image here. If you go to the basic tab, you see profiles are at the top. And for most images, you're probably going to use the Adobe Color Profile. And this is just kind of a, a base, something for you to get started. It's kind of like pre-processing your image a little bit just to get you started. And the Adobe Color Profile or any of the older profiles, the non-adapter profiles, when you put them on an image, it doesn't matter what image type it is, it's going to get applied the same exact way. So the Adobe Color Profile on a landscape image is going to be put on exactly the same as it would be if it was a wedding shot, or if it was a macro shot, or if it was a wildlife shot, it always gets applied the exact same way. An adaptive profile, on the other hand, kind of examines the scene, and it gets applied a specific way to the sky in one scene, the sky in a different scene, people in one scene, people in a different scene, so it adapts itself to the scene. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not 100% sure I like them. I think overall for some images, some scenes, it might work a little better. So it's another option. But for other scenes, the regular just Adobe prof color profile or your camera profile will work better. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to make a virtual copy of this image by hitting command apostrophe on my Mac. It's control apostrophe on a PC or a single quote, if you prefer to call it. So on this virtual copy, I'm going to use this new adaptive profile. Just click right here and you can see it's right there. You also have a black and white one. I'll demonstrate that in a moment. You also could get through to them through the profile browser. If you go there, Adobe took the liberty of making them favorites. So you can see they're right here. And they're also down here, adaptive profiles. Now, one thing to keep in mind, uh, as far as I know, they only work on raw files and I'm not sure if they work on all raw files. So if you have a specific camera, maybe a Fuji or something. Maybe they don't work on those types of RAW files, but they do work on my Nikon RAW files um, overall. Now we're going to go and we're going to do the adaptive color profile in this image and you can see what it did. So when we compare it to this profile, which is the normal Adobe color profile, which was the default profile for years, you can see the difference. Now, as far as editing is concerned, let's do an edit. And one curious thing, uh, when I was preparing for this video, I was going to click auto on both images so you could see what an auto edit would do with the two different profiles. One thing I, I found with the adaptive profile, if you click auto, it will come up with a warning saying for best results, avoid using auto and adaptive profiles together. And if you force it by clicking continue, you'll see that it's going to look hideous. So apparently you can't use auto with the adaptive profiles or you shouldn't use auto. I'm going to undo that. Command Z on my Mac. So what we'll do is I'll try to do a similar edit to both manually. So on this image here with the um, adaptive color profile, I think it's a tiny bit bright. I'm going to bring down brightness a little bit. I'm going to open up shadows, bring in highlights. I'm going to get a white point by holding the option key on my Mac, alt key on a PC, get a black screen, move it to the right till I see some color come through. I'm going to back it off because that means I'm blowing out the highlights. I don't want to do that. So I'll back it off to all that color dissipates. Same thing for blacks. I'll hold that option key in, alt key in a PC. Move left till I see some color come through. That means I'm starting to crush the shadows in those areas. Well, the bench is black, so it should be crushed. That looks pretty good. And then just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to move to haze a little bit, clarity a little bit, and texture a little bit. I got a decent edit with that. Now let's go to this image that used the older Adobe color profile. And here, let's open up shadows. Let's bring in highlights. Same thing. It's just different values. And I'm going to get a white point and a black point. And I'm going to do dehaze, texture, clarity, and so on. So there we go. So there is the older Adobe color profile. And here's the newer adaptive profile. Now it's like hard to, to adjust them, you know, because I'm doing it manually by eye. But 
if I go to reference view by hitting shift R on my computer, uh, this is the older profile here on the right. And here's the adaptive profile right there. So you could see the difference. Adaptive profile on the left, the older profile on the right. So you could see the difference. Now, what about the black and white profile? So let's do that. Let's get out of reference view and let's reset this image. And let's reset this image. Now, to get to the black and white, the Adobe, the older style Adobe monochrome profile, we'll go to the profile browser. You need to go to the Adobe Raw section here. This is a raw file. And we'll go to the Adobe Monochrome. So that's it. So we're going to do that. And that is the default black and white profile. Um, it would be, if I undid that, if I went back to the Adobe Color, if I just click black and white here, and let me close that, and then click black and white there, it's that's what it used, the Adobe Monochrome Profile. Then we'll go over here to this one. And instead of using that Adobe color, we're going to use the adaptive black and white and see what that does. Okay. All right. Now let's edit each of these individually. We'll start with the adaptive black and white, and it still seems a little bit too bright to me. I'm going to bring it down. Then I'll open up shadows, bring in highlights. I'm going to get a white point, same way I've been doing. And I'll get a black point. And I'll add a little bit of dehaze, a little bit of clarity, and a little bit of texture. And that's done. So this is the adaptive black and white profile in an edited image. It is crooked. I know that. I'm just not straightening up So for this demonstration. So here we go, the Adobe Monochrome. And uh, it seems a little dark, but let's open up shadows. And that seemed to look pretty good. Uh, bring down highlights a little. I'll get a white point again. And do that. And we'll get a black point. And then we'll go to texture, clarity, dehaze, and we'll call that a day. All right, so this is the older style Adobe Monochrome Profile, and here's the newer style Adobe Adaptive Black and White Profile. You can see they look pretty similar. And if I go to Reference View again um, by hitting Shift R, let's see, this one, if I click, all right, I don't know what's on the left. All right, I think this on the left is the adaptive profile, and this on the right is the um, monochrome profile you can see here. So there's the adaptive. You can see they look pretty much. I pretty much was able to adjust both of these pretty similarly uh, to one another. Uh, if I shift and click on this one, then they're both identical. So that is the adaptive profiles. And again, I think it's probably something that, for one image, it just might work better, but for a different image, one of the other profiles will work better. So it's just gives you kind of more um, arrows in your quiver. You know, you could just try it, it you to use it, and maybe it'll work for you. Whereas, you know, maybe go back to an image that you had a hard time editing and you really couldn't find a profile that worked for it. Maybe these adaptive profiles will work for those types of images that are more difficult to edit. And that's it. That's really all the notable new things that are found in this, the latest version of Adobe Lightroom Classic, version 14.2. And again, in the description below this video, I have a list of all the new lenses that have been added to this version of Lightroom. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.